Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's Foundation Friday for over 50s, we are going to be putting Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Foundation to the test to see how it performs on more mature, less than perfect skin. I do a multi-day wear test on this. I've actually used this quite a lot. I can't believe that I've been doing Foundation Fridays for so long and I have never tried this. The main reason I never tried it is because I had always heard that it was like full coverage, that it looked cakey, that it looks masky, and you know, that's just not what I'm about in a foundation. I like foundation that looks a little more natural, that's maybe sheer to medium coverage. And spoiler alert, can I just tell you that I was so shocked by this one? It's not masky. It's not cakey. I don't know what I was thinking and why I waited so long, but oh my gosh, I, I kind of love this. I know I never do this in the beginning of the video. I always like build up the suspense and make you wait, but it's good. So anyway, this retails for $42 for one ounce of foundation and it comes in a whopping 52 shades. This promises to be a 24 hour wearing flawless natural matte finish foundation with medium to full buildable coverage. It is oil free, transfer resistant. So I want to put all that to the test here today. This is housed in a pretty heavyweight kind of frosted glass bottle. Um, unfortunately, there is not a pump underneath this cap. This is one of the things that drive me crazy about some foundations. Before you tell me that they'll sell you a pump, I know, but come on, 10 bucks for a pump for this when it already costs 42? I mean, there are $8 drugstore foundations that come in a heavyweight glass bottle and include a pump. So just saying. <laughs> All right, so for the ingredients, this is a real basic formula. It's got water, it's got a few silicones, it's got a couple other things. The ingredient list is not a mile long. What it doesn't contain that I was happy to see is it doesn't have any fragrance and it doesn't have any drying ST alcohol. The shade that I bought it in is 3N1, but it's just a hair dark. The swatches I'm gonna show you are 3N1 and 3C1. So a little bit about me, I'm 56. I have a lot of sun damage on my skin. I have a little bit of redness around my nose and cheeks. I, of course, have wrinkles. I have enlarged pores. My skin is combo. I have a slightly oily T-zone. I am normal the rest of my face, and I have a little bit of dryness around my mouth and chin from time to time. Currently, my skin is feeling normal and good and not dry and not flaky at all. All right, so I have worn this a lot since I got it and I recorded most of the days. I think I have six days worth of footage to show you on this one. Of course, don't worry, we're not gonna be looking at all of them. It would just be way too much. It would put you to sleep. So I'm just gonna show you three of the days so that we can get a really good idea for how it wears with different things on under it. So for the first day that I'm gonna show you is the day where I didn't wear sunscreen. So this is no sunscreen, no primer. I applied it with my fingers on one side and my Morphe flat top kabuki brush on the other. It definitely does apply well with the fingers and the brush. The foundation blended into my skin well. It looked smooth and even. I loved the demi-matte natural looking skin-like finish on this. It didn't settle into pores. It didn't settle into any wrinkles. I can't say it did anything to smooth my pores or make them less noticeable, but it didn't accentuate them either. At the five hour check-in, I'm feeling like it's wearing really well, like it's all still in place and where it's supposed to be and hasn't moved at all and hasn't really faded at all. What I notice in this footage is that it's getting shiny in my T-zone. I feel like it's kind of accentuating my texture. So looking at it at the 10 hour check-in, um, I feel like it was starting to wear off on my nose, so it certainly wasn't going to last for 24 hours, uh, which is what their claim is, and I don't even know why they make these 24-hour claims. Can anyone explain this to me? I don't get it. Um, about 10 hours is what I was able to get out of it total, even on the best day, and it also felt oilier. It felt like it was coming off on my fingers and under my nails and moving around a little bit more. So anyway, that was the end of the no sunscreen day test. So the second day I applied it with my favorite sunscreen, which is the Make Prem UV Defense Me Fluid Sunscreen. I didn't use any primer and I applied it with a sponge. The Double Wear applies easily with a sponge. It blends beautifully. It doesn't leave any streaks or any patchiness. It definitely covered up that redness really well. The other makeup that I put on that day played really well with it and I like the look that I had going very much. So at the five hour check-in, I felt 
felt like it looked really, really nice. It hadn't gotten shiny in my T-zone. It wasn't sliding around or breaking up on the surface, and it didn't feel drying at all. It felt very comfortable to wear. I wasn't aware that I had makeup on. It wasn't coming off on my fingers or getting under my fingernails or transferring onto everything. And it's only a little bit worn off on my nose with a little bit of redness showing through there. So at the 10 hour check-in, I did not feel like I was gonna be getting 24 hours of wear out of it, but it didn't look bad either for 10 hours of wear. It was a little worn off on my nose and my cheeks, but it was mainly in place and looking good on the rest of my face. It hadn't settled into wrinkles, it wasn't patchy or weird looking or doing anything naughty while it wore off. So now let's move on to the third day of footage and on that day I used a new sunscreen. Well, it turns out I had actually tried it once before but I forgot. But that was the Paula's Choice Super Light Sunscreen SPF 30. I did use Too Faced 3-in-1 Setting Spray as a primer. I applied it with a brush over my entire face and I set it with Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. So this group of things was a really good combo that looked so good and wore really, really well. It looked good at the five hour check-in. All right, this looks good. No settling in wrinkles, no settling in pores. I'm not making my skin look dry and cakey and old. Um, really virtually no wearing off at five hours, so it likes this combination of things. And I went outside and did the outdoor test, and I went to my kitchen and did the kitchen test, so let me bring in those right now. We can take a look at how it looked in overhead kitchen light and in natural, super bright outdoor sunlight. So the sun is so low in the sky, I'm going to end up with a big shadow on my face. It looked good again at the 10 hour check-in. It didn't wear off on my nose. Maybe it was because of the sunscreen. I do find that this particular sunscreen does kind of glue my makeup in place and make it last a bit longer. It didn't settle into pores. It didn't settle into any wrinkles. So let's go ahead and do the phone test and the flash photography test. That looks really nice. It definitely looks smooth and pretty and there's no flashback from that Charlotte Tilbury powder. So finally found a powder that I can do the flash test with that won't give me flashback under the eyes. Let's go ahead and do the uh, transfer test. Now it may be too late in the day to do this because I have had this on for five or six hours already. But anyway, here we go. Nice, clean phone glass. Yeah, definitely a big smudge of makeup on there. All right, and that brings us up to the pros and cons on this one. So on the pro side, we have a huge list. It has a beautiful skin-like matte finish that I was really surprised at and that I really, really like. It doesn't settle into pores. It doesn't settle into wrinkles, two of the most important things for people of a certain age. Uh, it is comfortable and non-drying to wear. It doesn't contain SD alcohol or fragrance, so it won't be irritating to your skin. It offers buildable coverage that you can wear anywhere from sheer all the way up to full coverage. It dries down and feels set. It's easy to apply with fingers, brush, or sponge. It doesn't accentuate texture and it doesn't look cakey. On the con side was that the wear was not exactly what they promised. I couldn't get it even close to the 24 hours, uh, more like five to 10 before my nose got red, depending on what I had on under it. So the verdict on this one is that, shockingly, I had nothing to be afraid of. This is an excellent, excellent foundation. I really love it. I got compliments while I was wearing it. I mean, that is awesome. My friends know how much foundation I try, and if they don't say anything, I know it's not a good one. <laughs> But when I get a compliment, then I know that it's a good one. When they're like, ooh, what foundation are you trying today? Then I know it's a good one, and that happened twice with this one. So this is definitely going right up there, possibly knocking on the holy grail door. If I'm ranking it on the list of all my foundations, is it better than my Chanel Perfection Lumiere Velvet, which is my holy grail? Mm, I don't know neck and neck I'd say. Different things about them that I like. This one I get a perfect color match 
and I know my skin always looks great in this one and I get it to last a lot longer than this but this one does contain the alcohol and the fragrance so hmm, this one might be a little bit better for my skin um, do I like it better than the YSL all hours definitely like it better than YSL all hours uh, let's see what else how about the it CC cream I like it better than the it CC cream because this is pretty heavy and makeup -y looking and it settles in wrinkles so this doesn't do any of that so just you know comparing it to a few of my faves that I have in front of me this is going way up there if you're interested in finding out what I think of any foundation that I've reviewed I have a running list of all my reviews there are over a hundred over on my blog I'll put the link to that in the information box below the video 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 below the video you can go over there and check out the list they are ranked in order from best to worst and I have a couple of little call outs for best for dry skin best for oily skin and that includes drugstore and high-end and leave me a comment below letting me know what foundations you're interested in seeing on the next foundation Friday so that's it for the foundation review for today I hope you found it helpful and informative if you did give the video a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell as well. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. So have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.